Welcome to Art Bites, Short Encounters with a Collection of the Mariana Kistler Beach Museum of Art. I'm Catherine Slogic. I'm the Associate Curator of Education at the museum. And today I would like to share with you two photographic portraits by Richard Avedon. Um, these are Debbie McIntyre, a practical nurse, and her daughter Maria Cortez, photographed in Colorado, and Red Owens, an oil field worker from Velma, Oklahoma, these are part of Avedon's series in the American West. Um, Richard Avedon was born in New York City in 1923, and his interest in photography began at age 12. And at that point, he used his family's Kodak box brownie at the Young Man's Hebrew Association Camera Club. He later won awards for both poetry and photography, and he planned to study poetry and philosophy. He attended Columbia University for a year and then dropped out during World War II to join the Merchant Marines. While he was in the Merchant Marines, he was responsible for making the ID photographs of um, incoming members. And then he also worked for the Merchant Marines magazine called The Helm. After getting out of the army, um, he studied photography with Alexei Brodovich at the Design Laboratory at the New School for Social Research from about 1944 to 50. And he began doing advertising photography for Bonwit Tellers and working for Harper's Bazaar. Um, Brodovich was involved with Harper's Bazaar. Then in 1965, he followed the Harper's Bazaar um, um, editor, Diana Vreeland, to Vogue magazine. Fashion was sort of a natural for Avedon. His father ran a retail dress business on Fifth Avenue in New York City, and his mother's family had been involved in dress manufacturing. Because he was denied a studio um, while he was working at Harper's Bazaar, he actually photographed his um, models on the street. So they might be at beaches or in parks, at, at city fairs. And you can see that Carmen, um, homage to Munkasi coat by Cardan is one of those outdoor scenes. By the 60s, Avedon was doing portrait and photojournalistic photography. Um, distinct series included mental health hospitals in the South. Um, you can see one of those here. The civil rights movements and activists like Shirley Chazon. The Vietnam War protests, and he was actually in Vietnam as a correspondent and later the fall of the Berlin Wall. Working with high school classmate, African-American writer James Baldwin, he published Nothing Personal in 1964. And this is the first of many books that Avedon published. At that same time, he began to do um, these portrait photographs of well-known people, including the Beatles and Andy Warhol. He um, photographed Perry Edward Smith and Richard Hickok, Truman Capote's In Cold Blood Murderers in 1960, and he also photographed Capote. Um, in 1992, he continued this work as the first staff photographer at the New Yorker magazine. He died in San Antonio, Texas while on assignment for the New Yorker. At that time, he was also working on a project called Democracy in the lead up to the 2004 election. In 1978, Damon Carter Museum Director Mitchell Wilder commissioned Avedon to do a series of portraits to explore the effect of open land and empty space on ordinary people. Over the course of five summers, Avedon traveled the Western United States by car, photographing over 800 people. The, the selections were um, cut to approximately 120 images and in the American West opened at the Amon Carter in 1985 in a site-specific installation, which you can see here. There was also a book which has been republished um, in uh, 2015. Um, versions of the sh show toured um, all over the world, Corcoran Gallery, San Francisco Museum of Art, Art Institute of Chicago, Phoenix Art Museum, the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, High Museum of Art in Atlanta, in his biographical documentary, Avedon, Darkness and Light, Avedon called the project his best body of work. Although when he was um, working on this and, and had started the project, he told Wilder it could be a disaster. The artistic process for the, in the American West was recorded in film and with journal entries 
by Avedon's assistant, Laura Wilson. And she subsequently published a book called Avedon at Work in the American West. And this gives us some real insight to the process that Avedon used. Avedon said, I've worked out a series of no's, no to exquisite light, no to apparent composition, no to the seduction of poses or narratives. And all these no's force me to the yes. I have a white background. I have a person I'm interested in and the thing that happens between us. So as you can see here, the subjects were photog photographed against a large sheet of white paper, nine feet by seven feet. Um, Avedon worked in the shades. So there was no visible light source and he didn't use any artificial light. He used an eight by 10 Deerdorf view camera on a tripod, which you can see here. And once he had the focus, he then stepped away from the camera to take the shot. Um, Avedon did not do his own dark room, dark room work. He didn't make his own prints. Um, he worked with Rudy Hoffman and David Litschwager, and they um, did numerous um, copies until they had exactly what Avedon wanted. And then the final gelatin silver prints on Portriga Rapid Paper by Agva Gevert were very large, 56 by 45 inches and 47 by 37 inches and they were mounted on aluminum to give them enough support. Avedon's signature portrait style, the formality of this straight on figure against a white background with a sober expression is a document and monument of the individual. Critics believe that it dates back to his time doing the ID photos in the Merchant Marines. From, the point, from that point, portrait photography really fascinated him. Poses, attitudes, hairstyles, clothing, and accessories were vital. Avedon said, my photographs don't go below the surface. I have great faith in surfaces. A good one is full of clues. He also said, faces are the ledgers of experience. And as we look at this portrait of Debbie McIntyre, we can really see that. Um, that testament to the faces really being the key. In the American West, subjects were found at fairs, malls, public events, jails, and workplaces. Laura Wilson tells the stories of finding the subjects in a background essay in the book. Many of the photographs, like the one of Red Owens that we see here, a field worker in the Velma oil fields, um, were feature the workers that were part of the energy boom of the 1970s, coal miners in Montana and Wyoming, roughnecks and roustabouts in the oil fields of Oklahoma and Texas. They were men doing dangerous and dirty jobs and a real change from the days of the open range. These really sort of replace the cowboy as sort of the, the um, symbol of, of manhood. Um, these images were taken as the men were leaving the work and it really captures their exhaustion and the detritus of the job on their faces and bodies. As we take a final look at these two portraits, Avedon really sums up all the portraits in this series. A portrait is not a likeness. The moment an emotion or fact is transformed into a photograph, it is no longer a fact but an opinion. There is no such thing as inaccuracy in a photograph. All photographs are accurate. None of them is the truth. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this.